Hey, you welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about, and we're going to be going over the best stocks to buy right now. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and without further ado, let's get right into it. As you can see on screen, the stock market has started to tumble recently due to the magnificent seven technology stocks shedding some of their gains, which has dragged down the entire stock market. But there is good news here. I normally use these downtrends as an opportunity to buy into my favorite companies, especially companies like Apple, Microsoft, and Alphabet. Also, we should also incorporate Amazon and Tesla into that list as well. Except recently, Apple has actually fallen by around 3% in their share price, due to their iPhone sales over in China being less than impressive. Their smartphone sales over in the Chinese market have actually plunged in the first six weeks of 2024, so this is not good news for Apple. But if you know me, I absolutely love Apple and I am continuously adding them to my personal portfolio. You should also be aware that Bitcoin has set a new record yesterday after jumping past $69,000 before pulling back to around $62,000 in the respected price. So if you are a cryptocurrency investor, this is great news for you. On top of that, this momentum in Bitcoin is also lifting altcoins in their respected prices as well. So overall, this is great news for cryptocurrency investors. But now let's jump back to stocks. Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA, is an electric vehicle manufacturer that also specializes in artificial intelligence, energy storage, and energy generation. Tesla is one of my all-time favorite stocks, and the reason why Tesla is in the news is because this automaker had to stop work at their Germany plant because of a police investigation. The reason why the police are investigating their German plant over in Berlin is because they believe that arson occurred. Occurred. Essentially, someone put fire to an electric pylon, and this cut power to the entire facility. Though the fire did not spread to the entire plant itself, it was still very dangerous, and the facility had to stop work. According to Reuters, this blaze will cost Tesla hundreds of millions of euros, and it just creates another headache for this company. Over the last few months, Tesla has not had very positive news updates. However, I personally am continuously buying this company on weakness, and we're actually going to talk more about Tesla a little later in this video, so stay tuned for that, especially if you are a Tesla shareholder. But before we move on to that, I want to talk about a couple of quick news updates. The first one is that Jeff Bezos has recently surpassed Elon Musk to become the world's richest person after he sold some of his Amazon stock. However, this is only happening because Tesla's share price is falling right now, which is lowering Elon Musk's overall net worth. But now let's talk about McDonald's, which is another fantastic company that I personally own in my portfolio. McDonald's is one of the most successful fast food chains to ever exist. And recently, they reported that they are aiming to become the new sponsor of France's top soccer league. So overall, this is going to create great publicity for McDonald's. So I'd love to hear if you hold McDonald's in your portfolio down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about why Target's sales recently fell for the first time in the last eight years. And because of this, they are launching a new subscription service. I personally hold Target in my portfolio because I take a co-optition approach, which means that if I hold Walmart in my portfolio, I will also buy into Target considering that these are fierce competitors. I do the same thing with Lowe's and Home Depot, as well as Coca-Cola and Pepsi. For context, Target is a very large retailer, and recently, their annual sales dipped for the first time since 2016. On top of that, the company gave an uninspiring sales forecast for the remainder of the this year. But despite this, Target's stock still popped by around 12% after they reported higher than anticipated profits. In my personal opinion, these gains will not last and the stock will pull back in their share price due to this melancholy forecast in regards to the revenues and sales. However, to combat slowing sales, Target recently announced a paid membership called Target Circle 360. This program is meant to directly compete with Walmart Plus and Amazon Prime, so they're going to offer per so like same-day shipping for orders over $35. On top of that, in April, they will have a promotion price of only $49 per year, and then it will cost around $99 per year starting May 18th. Target is hoping that this membership will help them compete better against Walmart
Walmart and Amazon, and hopefully it will encourage people to continuously buy and shop at Target, but only time will tell. Overall, I think this is a great move by Target, and I would love to hear your thoughts about this down below. Next up, let's talk about AI news, where Anthropic debuts a chatbot that rivals ChatGPT4, and here's what I mean. Anthropic, which is backed by both Amazon and Alphabet, said recently that they had released a new version of its AI chatbot. This chatbot is named Claude 3, and they outperform OpenAI's ChatGPT in almost every respect. Unlike ChatGPT4, Claude 3 can summarize entire books and chunks of texts while also analyzing images. And although ChatGPT4 can do some of these things, they can't do it to the degree that Claude 3 can, so this gives them a huge competitive advantage. However, there is a problem here, and this problem has been circulating throughout a variety of various chatbots, and here's the problem. Both Anthropic and Google have admitted that their AI chatbots could generate false statements and information even though they are framing them as facts. Even the vice president of product management at Google's AI unit said that these outputs can't be trusted right now from these chatbots. So therefore, Anthropic and Google are trying to increase the accuracy of the results and the conclusions that their AI chatbots are reaching. Now, this does not mean that everything that these chatbots have produced are inaccurate, but it still seems that there is a large margin of error that needs to be fixed. Overall, I am excited about the competition between chatbots to determine which one is going to be the best for the majority of users. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below and comment which of these chatbots that you personally use, if you use any of them. In macroeconomic news, we need to be paying attention to the Federal Reserve, because depending on what they decide to do with interest rates, this will dictate where the future of the stock market will go. The Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell said that reducing policy constraints too soon or too much could result in a reversal of progress we have seen in inflation and ultimately require even tighter policies to get inflation back to 2%. And this news is making investors nervous. However, he did repeat himself and he says that there will likely be an appropriate time to begin dialing back policy constraints later this year, which is great news for investors. This means that the general stock market is going to get a huge catalyst sometime this year, but then it begs the question, when is this catalyst going to take place? Well, I'll tell you. According to the latest data, investors are saying that the first rate cut, which will act as a positive catalyst for the general stock market, will occur at the Fed's June meeting, with a 58.8% probability of this catalyst going through. So this is great news for investors. In the meantime, investors just need to hold tight in the general stock market, which which should be very volatile until June. But once June comes by, this is going to be great news for investors overall. So make sure to do your large purchases before then in my personal opinion, but always make sure to do your own research before you invest into any company, especially the companies mentioned in this video. Speaking about companies in this video, let's talk about Supermicro, which I have been buying lately, but actually I've been selling some of my shares off because of the recent surge that this company has experienced. However, it seems that Wall Street is not done with this company yet. Ticker symbol SMCI should at minimum be on investors watch lists according to my opinion, but recently they got great news. This great news comes in the form of an Argus analyst covering this company, to where he put a buy rating on this company and a price target of $1,350 per share, to where right now they trade at around $1,136 per share. In the last video, I warned investors that eventually this company's share price will start to trend downwards. However, it seems that right now is not the time because they are still trending upwards and they are getting higher and higher price targets from analysts. To justify his price target, the analyst said the following, and I quote, In our view, Supermicro is a leading computer and server provider for the age of generative AI. He goes on to say, In addition to a full line of rack and blade servers for cloud, enterprise, data center, and other applications, Supermicro provides GPU-based systems for deep learning, high-performance computing, and other applications. To make things even better, we need to remember that Supermicro has seen earnings growth at an annual rate of around 53% in recent years. And on top of that, the revenue has jumped by around 37% year-over-year, which is great news. And then to bring it all home, this company has also experienced very 
very impressive demand, and according to Supermicro's valuation, it's not so out of line when we compare them to companies like Apple, Amazon, and Nvidia. Therefore, this analyst has a buy rating on Supermicro, and he believes the company could reach $1,350 in their price target over the next 12 months. So, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below. For me, I am slowly chipping away at my position because I have already made so much money from this company, but again, I would love to hear your thoughts down below about this company and if you hold them in your portfolio. Next, let's talk about Tesla in regards to why an analyst has decreased his projections for this company and why Kathy Wood is buying up shares right now just like I am. So let's jump right into it. A Morgan Stanley analyst named Adam Jonas, who is actually a Tesla bull, recently lowered his earnings projections by 25% for Tesla. He even said that this EV giant could potentially lose money this year. Meanwhile, Kathy Wood and myself are actually buying this company hand over fist to where Kathy Wood bought approximately 80,000 shares of Tesla. So let's talk about why this is and why so many prominent analysts and investors are disagreeing with each other about this company. First, let's talk about this Morgan Stanley analyst, which cut his Tesla price target from $345 per share down to $320 per share. However, even though he lowered his price prediction for this company, he maintained an overweight rating on this stock, which is good news. But now let's talk about his $320 price target and why this is actually pretty accurate. And I'm going to quote straight from the article, which says the following. The bulk of the analyst's $320 price target for Tesla stock includes $68 per share for their core auto business, $61 per share for Tesla's mobility, $39 per share for Tesla as a third-party supplier, and $38 per share for Tesla's energy business. Which I actually think is pretty fair, considering that the company's trading for around $180 right now, which is an absolute steal. You should also know that Wall Street expects Tesla's earnings per share to come in at around $3.06. However, we need to remember that last year, they actually brought in $3.12 per share, so this would represent a decline year over year, which is going to show very negatively in their respected share price. But it's not all bad news for Tesla, because let me tell you why I am investing in this company right now. First, we need to remember that this company is being ran by Elon Musk himself, and this company is focusing on the next generation of electric vehicles, energy storage, artificial intelligence, and full self-driving capabilities. And once these products really start to get off the ground, Around, this company will be a revenue-making machine. And I'm not alone in buying Tesla shares right now, because Kathy Wood of ARK Invest is loading the boat on Tesla to where she purchased 79,956 shares recently, worth around $180 per share. Therefore, she spent around $14.5 million on Tesla stock. Therefore, even though Tesla has retreated around 27% in their share price, I view this as a great buying opportunity right now, especially for those of you who have yet to get into this phenomenal company. So I would love to hear your thoughts about Tesla down below. Next, let's talk about Palantir Technologies, because in the last video, we predicted that they would win the US Army contract for the Titan project, and that's exactly what happened. Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies, and this company specializes in artificial intelligence. Recently, Palantir announced that they won a $178 million US Army contract for the project called Titan. Titan stands for Tactical Intelligence Targeting Access Node, and it's a battlefield system which will aggregate data from space and terrestrial sensors for long-range precision targeting and other battlefield planning. So this is absolutely phenomenal news for Palantir Technologies, and this is why the PLTR stock price popped by around 9.7%, up to $26.12 per share. We also have to remember that this company jumped by 39% throughout the year of 2024, and it looks like this company has a very bright future, even though in my opinion, they are overvalued. And to top it all off, Palantir has an upcoming catalyst, to where Palantir said that they have plans to showcase their new AI platform at their AIPCon event, which will take place on March 7th. Therefore, Palantir has experienced a lot of positive news lately, so please be aware of a pullback in their share price, but in general, this is a fundamentally solid company to hold in your portfolio, so I'd love to hear your thoughts about this company down below. Next up, let's talk about CrowdStrike stock, which recently jumped in their share price after forecasting strong cybersecurity demand. So let's jump right into it. CrowdStrike recently jumped by 20% in their share price, which sparked a massive rally in both CrowdStrike and other cybersecurity stocks. The reason for this is because the company 
projected a very upbeat annual forecast for their future earnings and revenues. And therefore, the demand for cybersecurity is increasing, which is great news. If you recall previously, we actually saw Palo Alto Networks, which is another cybersecurity company, give lackluster guidance. So when investors saw that CrowdStrike has very positive guidance, this lifted their spirits. And this is why CrowdStrike, as well as other cybersecurity firms, are increasing in their respected share prices, to where Zscaler, Fortinet, and Sentinel-1 rose between 1 to 9.8% respectively. So there is a lot of positive enthusiasm surrounding CrowdStrike right now, to where the CEO of Capital Market Laboratories had to say the following about CrowdStrike, and he says, and I quote, CrowdStrike does feel like the next mega cap company, and the first to truly separate itself from the rest of the younger enterprise software companies, end quote. So this is great news for CrowdStrike. However, there is one problem here. CrowdStrike stock trades at 74.47 times their forward earnings estimates. And when we compare that to Palo Alto or Fortinet, they trade at around 49.09 and 39.01. And this technically means that from a value perspective, Palo Alto and Fortinet are better buying opportunities. However, in my opinion, when we offset this compared to the respected growth rates, I think these are all pretty comparable to one another. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this down below. Next up, we have Broadcom, which this author believes could be the next AI stock that is set to explode in their respected share price. So let's talk about it. On Thursday, Broadcom, ticker symbol AVGO, will be the latest AI stock to report earnings. For context, Broadcom is a diversified semiconductor maker which has gained around 21% in their share price. And the reason why their share price is increasing is due to the AI momentum wave that we are experiencing in the stock market right now. Broadcom isn't known for GPUs, and instead, Broadcom's strength is in the form of networking chips that allow AI components to work together. This is why a number of Wall Street analysts have pointed out that Broadcom is the second largest AI chip stock winner after Nvidia, but so far it has not really shown up in their share price. When we look at Broadcom's stock chart, they are not experiencing the kind of blowout growth that Nvidia or Supermicro have seen. However, that is not to say that this couldn't happen, because I personally own Broadcom in my portfolio, and I'm excited how they could take advantage of this AI momentum. Currently, analysts have a modest expectation for Broadcom's future results. The average analyst calls for Broadcom to bring in on Thursday revenue of $11.72 billion, equating to a 31% increase from a year ago. However, they also project that their earnings will slightly fall from what they brought in last time, because they are guiding for $10.29 instead of $10.33. And the main reason for this is because Broadcom recently acquired VMware, and this is going to weigh on their overall earnings. However, for long-term investors, Broadcom looks like a great choice to add to your portfolio. By adding this company to your portfolio, you will be adding a stable, resilient, mega cap company that will have consistent growth while also taking advantage of artificial intelligence, and therefore it's a great choice in my opinion, but always make sure to do your own research. Next up, let's talk about ChargePoint stock and why they are dropping in their share price very aggressively. ChargePoint is an electric vehicle charging company, and they recently reported mixed fiscal fourth quarter results. ChargePoint recently announced a negative adjusted fourth quarter EBITDA loss of 45 $5.3 million on sales of $115.8 million. However, Wall Street was looking for them to post negative EBITDA of $48 million, in which they beat that estimate. However, they fell short on sales because Wall Street believed that this company should have brought in around $120 million. And these mixed results is just one of the reasons why the company has continuously fallen in their share price. They have literally shed around 81% in their share price over the last 12 months. So this is not looking good for this company. Looking ahead, things get even worse worse, because for the first fiscal quarter, their sales are anticipated to come in between 100 million and 105 million, which is below Wall Street expectations, because Wall Street believes this company should bring in around 109 million dollars. So again, this is more bad news for ChargePoint. But there is light at the end of this tunnel, because according to management, their projections for January of 2025 expect this company to post positive EBITDA, and this would beat Wall Street expectations, considering that Wall Street believes this company would bring in negative EBITDA of around $22 million for January of 2025. And when I mention January of 2025, I'm referring to the fiscal fourth quarter ending 
January of 2025. So it seems that over the next 12 months, this company is going to be very negative and volatile in regards to their share price. But after that point, this company should start to tick up in their share price over the long term. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this down below. Last up, let's talk about Abercrombie, which recently topped profit estimates and brought in very robust sales momentum. Ticker symbol ANF recently reported fourth quarter earnings that exceeded forecasts. And the reason why this is impressive is because apparel retailers have really been going through it lately in a negative way. So despite uncertain macroeconomic conditions, this company still impressed investors. However, I personally am not invested in this company. This company is essentially a clothing retailer, and they are very popular among millennials and Generation Z. Now, the good thing about this company is that they have experienced five consecutive quarters of revenue growth. And for their earnings, it gets even better, considering that they reported earnings of $2.97 per share. And this beat analysts' estimates of around $282 per share. So that was great news for this company. More good news is that over the last 12 months, this company has risen by over 400% in their share price. This is due to the company creating a turnaround in their share price and in the overall company, since this company was trading at a very low share price over four years ago. However, there is bad news here, because right now, they expect full year net sales to rise between 4 and 6%, which is a huge decline from their original 21% growth rate in the prior fiscal year. Overall, this is a pretty interesting company, but again, I do not own this company in my portfolio. But with that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.